in today's lesson, we're going to continue our work with augmented matrices. Um, but now we're going to, instead of putting them in re row echelon form, we'll put them in reduced row echelon form, which is also called Gauss-Jordan elimination. The only extra requirement that we need to do for this um, is to make sure that when we have a leading entry, that every entry above or below that leading entry will be zero. So um, we do these problems, or to do Gauss-Jordan elimination, we'll do it the same way that we did just regular Gauss elimination. Um, so I want the first row, first to entry to be a one. So I multiply that row by one six, and then I want all the other ones to be zeros. So I will multiply this first row by negative five, and add it to row two. And then I'll um, multiply row one by three, and add it to row three to make that happen. Now a unique thing happens here is that on the second row, the second entry has actually been changed to zero because of our addition. So then I can actually switch my two rows to fit my needs. So I'm going to switch the second and the third row with one another. So then now I can have a number in that second row, second column position to make one. So I'll multiply the second row by one tenth. And then uh, multiply the row two by negative three and add it to row one to make that value a zero. So essentially when you're doing reduced row echelon form here, um, you're essentially getting the first entry of the top left corner to be a one and everything below it to be a zero. Um, the middle row, the second column, needs to be a one and everything up the number above and below need to be zero and then the last row third column everything above it needs to be zero so you kind of go in that process or that same order so now I want to make the third row that eight to be a one so I multiply it by the reciprocal of one eighth And then I want the first row to be a zero above it. So I'll multiply by 10 to the third row and add to the first row. And then I'll multiply the third row by negative three and add it to the second row. So then a neat thing with the solution is that um, you'll actually have the answer already done for you after you're done with this process. So you don't have to plug anything in afterwards. So kind of neat that that stays all in the matrix C form. Okay, example two here. Um, one thing to note is that in that middle row, you don't have a number for Y or a variable for Y. So it's just use zero to kind of fit that spot. Okay, here I see that there's a one in the bottom row in that first column. So then I actually switch row one and row three with one another to get the same desired effect. Okay, now I can just add row one to row two to get that negative one to be a zero. And then I'll multiply row one by three and add it to row three to get the zero in that bottom column or the bottom row. Now here I notice that one is already in the spot for the second row, so I can skip that part. Multiply the second row by negative one and add it to the first row to get that um, second column, um, first row to be zero. And then I'll multiply row two by two and add it to the third row, so I can get a zero there. And then here, a unique thing happens is that the bottom row actually becomes all 
zeros, which means that zero equals zero. So it's another situation where um, your last variable is a um, just going to be a scalar number. So we'll say z is equal to t. So now here we're forced to kind of take them out of the augmented matrix because um, you can't really continue on with the process if um, there's no one in that third row, third column. So we have to use back substitution here. So z is equal to t, I plug it in to find um, my x, and I plug it in to find my y, and then that's my solution. Okay, example three here, a nutritionist is performing an experiment on student volunteers. He wishes to feed one of his subjects a daily diet that consists of a combination of three commercial diet foods, mini cow, liquid, fast, and slim quick. For the experiment, it is important that the subject consume exactly 500 milligrams of potassium, 75 grams of protein, and 1150 units of vitamin D every day. The amounts of these nutrients in one ounce in, of each food are given in the table. How many ounces of each food should the subject eat every day to satisfy, satisfy the nutrient requirements ex exactly? So here we're going to set um, x, y, and z equal to the number of ounces of each um, diet um, food that they have. So one's mini cow, uh, y is liquifast, and z is slim quick. And now we need to write equations that match that. So here, if I want to uh, write my equations, I kind of need to write equations based on the uh, requirements that they need. So if they need to have a certain amount of potassium, then I should write an equation for potassium. So mini cal has 50 milligrams of uh, potassium, 75 in liquid fast, and 10 in slim quick. Then we write an equation for protein. Um, so 5x plus 10y plus 3z equals 75. And then we'll write one for our vitamin D. Uh, since they need 1150 units, um, we'll have 90x plus 100y plus 50z equals 1150. And so these will be the three equations we use to operate from there. Um, since there's not enough space on this screen, I'm going to go to the next slide to kind of write this equation using our augmented matrices. So in that first row, I want that to be a 1 in the first column. So I'm going to multiply that row by uh, 1 over 50. And then I want zeros below that 1, so I'll multiply the first row by negative 5 and add it to row 2. And then once I've done that, I'll multiply the first row by negative 90 and add it to row 3. And then from there, I want the middle row, the second column, to have a 1 in that position. So going to multiply by the reciprocal. You can use um, two-fifths in this case. I wrote it as 1 over 2.5. It's both the same thing because remember 2.5 is 5 halves. So I could multiply by two-fifths. It'd give me the same result. And then from there, I want to get the 1.5 to be a zero. So I multiply the second row by negative 1.5 and 
Add it to the first row. And then from there, I want the negative 35 to be a zero. So I multiply the middle row by 35 and add it to um, the third row. Then I want the 60 to be a one in the third row. So I'm gonna multiply third row by one divided by 60. And then from there, I want that negative one to be a zero, so I'm just gonna add row three to add row one, since they are actually additive opposites already. And then from there, I'm going to multiply third row by negative 0.8, and add it to row two. And then I have my answers. So I will need, like my subject will need five ounces of mini cow, two ounces of liquifast, and 10 ounces of slim quick. Hopefully you found this video to be helpful. Thanks for watching.